Today I'm going to show you how to find the DH table for a Puma 260 manipulator. I've already assigned the coordinate frames according to the DH rules. Those two rules are that xi is perpendicular to z of i minus 1 and that xi must intersect z of i minus 1. And then we can select y according to the right hand rule. Let's go over quickly the four DH parameters that we need to find. Uh, first, we have A of I, which is the distance from Z of I minus 1 to Z of I along X of I. And we have alpha, which is the rotation between Z of I minus 1 and Z of I about X of I. Then we have D of I, which is the distance from x of i minus 1 to x of i along z of i minus 1. And we have theta, which is the angle between x of i minus 1 and x of i about z of i minus 1, and any rotation needed to align x of i minus 1 with x of i. Just, we can just kind of keep in mind that a of i and alpha i are about x of i, and d of i and theta i are about z of i minus 1. For link 1, we see that a is 0 as there is no distance between z0 and z1 along x1. For alpha, let's see what we need to do in order to have the z-axis align. We have z0, z1, and x0 positive rotation is that way, and we need z0 to rotate negative 90 degrees in order for the axis to align. Uh, for d of i, we have 13 inches, and for theta, we have a rotation of theta 1 we need to account for, and no other rotation needed to align the x-axis. Now let's look at link 2. A is the distance from Z1 to Z2, which we see here is 8. Then alpha is 0 as the x axes are aligned. For D, there's a distance of D2 from x1 to x2. Um, but since we are moving the opposite direction of Z1, this is negative. So D of i is negative d2. For theta, we have a rotation of theta2 for the joint variable and no further no rotation needed to align x2 and x1. For link 3, we can see that a is 0 as frame 2 and 3 share the same origin. For Alpha is 90, as we need to rotate 90 degrees counterclockwise to align Z2 with Z3, about X3. DI is 0, as again, there's no distance between the origins. For theta, we have a joint rotation of theta 3. And then we also need to account for the rotation needed to align X2 and X3, about Z2 which is 90 degrees. Now let's look at link 4. We see that A of I is 0. Now let's look at alpha and see that C4, C3, and X4 like this. Positive rotation is this way. And we need to rotate negative 90 degrees to get the axis to align. Now for D, we see that there's a distance of 8 here. And then for theta, we have a joint rotation of theta 4 we need to account for. And x3 and x4 are already aligned. Now let's look at link 5. 
we can see that frame 5 and frame 4 share the same origin, so we know that A is 0. Now let's look at Z4 and Z5 to find alpha. Z5 is like this, Z4 is like this, and X5 is this way. And positive rotation would be this way. And we need to go this way. So alpha is 90 degrees, a positive 90 degrees. Um, D is 0. And theta, we have a joint rotation of theta 5. Plus, we have to take a look at how to align x4 and x5. So x4, x5 are like this. We have z4. Uh, positive rotation is this way. So we need to rotate negative 90 for the axis to align. Great, now let's look at link 6. Now for link 6, I've highlighted the axes so it's a little easier to see. Um, for A of I, we have for link 6 a 0 because Z5 and Z6 both have the same origin, so there's no distance between them. For alpha I, um, this is also 0 because the z-axis are already aligned. For d of i, we see that there's a distance between x5 and x6 along z5 of d6. And for theta i, we see there's a theta 6 rotation for the joint, but there's no rotation needed to align the x-axis. Now that we have our DH parameters, we can plug them into our equation for A of I, which will give us six homogeneous transformation matrices, A1, A2, A3, A4, A5, and A6. Then we can use that to find T, our transformation matrix. We would post-multiply A1, a2, A3, A4, A5, and A6. And that's it. Thank you.